this person said, how do I know if my mother is emotionally abusive? I don't know if you could maybe start Josh by just kind of saying what is emotional abuse and then kind of leading into that. Yeah, it's a good uh, question, a good starting place. You know, emotional abuse is really about a disrespect for the personhood of the individual. And that God created people in his image and created us with value that's valuable to him, so much so that we have the gospel of him coming in the flesh to redeem the value that he finds in us. And his desire is that we would treat one another in a way that respects that value. You know, that's really what love is about. It's about recognizing a person's value and treating them in a way that respects that value. And abuse is really about a disrespect of that value. It's about a acting towards, talking towards, treating in a way that disrespects that value. And it exists along a continuum, okay, that you can have uh, a low level of disrespect, high levels of disrespect, uh, and there's a like a amplifier or an amplifying effect uh, based on the intimacy of the relationship that's involved, right? So if someone is uh, hateful and uh, disrespectful or manipulative, uh, undermining in some way, and they're basically a stranger to me, the impact of that is pretty minimal, right? I'm like, I don't know you, you don't know me, go fly a kite, right? I'm not really all that impacted because there's no intimacy in the relationship. They don't have access to vulnerable parts of my heart that that I'm, I don't allow them that close. But the more intimate the relationship, the more vulnerable the relationship, the bigger the impact of that disrespect. And so it, it uh, serves as like a multiplier or magnifier, amplifier to the impact of those things. And so when you think about a relationship with a mom, that's a very sacred relationship. Right? That, that no one is supposed to love us more, respect us more, value us more than our mom. And that we literally were created and grew inside of her and we're part of her body at one point in time. And uh, our, she's supposed to be able to see our value even if no one else in the world does. So there's a real kind of sacred trust that's there. It's a, as vulnerable a relationship as we can have as humans is in that relationship. And so to feel uh, like your values disrespected, that um, who you are as a person isn't valued, your, um, as you grow and mature as an adult, that your autonomy, your thoughts, your feelings, uh, even as a kid are not valued, that you as a, a separate individual and in person from her to not be valued or celebrated can be incredibly painful and can be really uh, destructive to one's sense of self and identity. Because we're not like born with an innate sense of identity. And that we have a unique identity as we're created in Christ and designed for a specific purpose and good works and creation. But as an infant, we don't have a sense of that. Right? And so we, we really look to the important people, like our family of origin, our mom, dad, primary people in our life, to tell us about us. It's like... Like as we're growing up, we're trying to create a self-portrait, right? An identity, but there's no mirrors. And so we can't just like look in the mirror and go, oh, that's what I look like. We have to ask the important people in our life, what am I like? What, do I, what am I like? And we're reliant on what they tell us, their reflections to us, to have a sense of understanding. Am I smart? Am I dumb? Am I capable? 
Am I incompetent? Am I strong? Am I weak? Am I a delight and a joy? Or am I a nuisance, a pain? I don't know. And based on the messages that we get, that sense of understanding of who we are in relationship to important people in our life is shaped. Uh, and so very much we can grow up not having a good sense of who we are and our identity or a uh, conception of our identity that is distorted because it doesn't reflect the way our creator sees us. And in a perfect world, we don't live in a perfect world and there are no perfect parents, but in a perfect world, our parents would reflect a exact image of us. That's how God sees us. So our parents would see us as God sees us and what they reflect on us through their words and their actions and the way they treat us and the way they talk to us, where they engage us, what they tell us about ourselves, would perfectly reflect how God sees us. And we would grow up with an understanding of who we are in God's eyes and a sense of identity that's rooted in that. To the degree the message that we get from parents is distorted or doesn't match how God sees us is the degree to which our self-image, self-concept is distorted. And so that's, that's kind of um, in a few paragraphs uh, how that sense of identity and value is formed and the trauma impact that that being distorted or disrespected kind of really happens in, uh, in a relationship like with the mom. Yeah, yeah. Would you say, is it even, is it possible to be emotionally abusive and not realize it to, you know, totally. be in that state and not even, you know, it be intentional? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that very often we, uh, we do what we know, right? That uh, we can't give what we don't have. And we repeat the patterns that we learn in our own experience. And so it's normal and common, though not necessarily good and healthy, for parents to respond in ways that resemble what they're familiar with in their own upbringing. And so it can feel very normal to them because it's what they're used to, and yet still be really destructive without them knowing it or realizing it. Yeah, so how would you, you know, what if, for example, say my mom is emotionally abusive and I recognize mm -hmm. in that in that in her, how would you suggest that I handle the situation if she doesn't realize it? You know, I mean, people don't typically respond well to being told that they're emotionally abusive. So what would be no. your suggestion in handling that kind of situation? Yeah, super difficult. And uh, almost impossible, if not impossible, to navigate if you don't build into your life supports of some strong, healthy people. And that uh, if I grew up my whole life uh, being told that the color of the chair you're sitting in is red, then I sit down with you and uh, you tell me that you're sitting in a white chair, like you're at, you're colorblind. You don't know what you're talking about. That's clearly red. And because I know that that's red. My whole life I've known that that's red, right? That's what I've known. And so I'm going to be resistant to taking in information contrary to what I know to be true. And so we kind of are self-reinforcing in our view of things in a way. And so when we're beginning to kind of question some of what we've been told, maybe because it just doesn't feel right, doesn't set right, and something inside of tells us that this is not true or not the way things are supposed to be, that there's that healing, redemptive, growth-oriented part of us that gets designed into us that wants to, to right what's distorted and wrong in us. So we have a sense that something's not right here. You're going to need people in your life that you can reality test with, right? You've got to be able to have people in your life that you can bounce your own thoughts 
as well as what you're hearing from uh, the primary sources or the family of origin sources in your life off of to kind of reality test those things. And the church can be a really redemptive and healthy place for that, where our uh, church family in that is able to be a family to us that helps us heal from some of the wounds that we experience maybe in our family of origin. So one of the things that you are looking for in that is looking at their family and go, you know, if I'm going to surround myself with uh, some other women, right? Tori, if you're working through this yourself, you're going to want to surround yourself with some other women that uh, can, uh, you know, would be old enough to be your mom, but not your mom, that you can trust and can be a support to you and help you kind of sort through the murky waters of trying to distinguish what's true and what's not true. Uh, as, as it pertains to the messages that you've received about you growing up. So you're going to want to look at those women's families, their marriages, their relationship with their kids and whatnot, and go, is that the kind of relationship that I want to have with my spouse? Is that the kind of relationship when I'm their age? Do I want to have the kind of relationship that they have with their kids? Are they Are they good models for what it is that you feel drawn to and what's inside of you is telling you is what you would want for your life. And that's kind of a starting place for beginning to identify potential people that you could, you might invite into your life in this way to then be able to kind of bounce these things off of, which then gives you some sources of truth and some sources of affirmation, some sources of encouragement and support that helps you get it straight in your own head, kind of who you are and your experience, which then gives you the ability to stand up against that and to set boundaries with uh, maybe a parent that's uh, abusive in your life. Otherwise, it gets really confusing and really difficult, if not impossible, to just all on your own, no support, no outside kind of direction or truth testing or anything else to completely go against everything that you've ever known. Like that's kind of hard to do. Right. Yeah. No, I, I love your insight. I think that that's awesome. My mother is not emotionally abusive, but my heart does. <laughs> yeah. break. Yes. No, it's great. But my heart does break for the person yeah. who asked this question because I mean, like you said, you know, the, the mother mother daughter mother son relationship so is so precious and it's so precious to the father mm -hmm. um and so that brokenness there that crookedness that you know it was not designed to be there i mean it's incredibly difficult to to handle and, and incredibly difficult to manage because you know you think of my mom my dad protects me not they're hurting me you know mm -hmm. and i think that that can be an extremely difficult situation so my heart breaks for the person who, who asked this, but I, I hope that this was able to give you some insight and give you some encouragement. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I uh, respect the, the courage that it takes to ask the question and put yourself out there. And I just want to really affirm you that there's a part of you that wants to heal that God's put in you. It's that part of you that asks the question and that's kind of drawing you along this journey as the Lord leads you forward into the healing that you long for.